April 16, 2007, tragedy struck the campus of Virginia Tech. That day was also a defining moment in the life of a young man named Matt Rogers. Let's take a look. April 16, 2008 marks the one-year anniversary of the worst massacre in a school in U.S. history. 33 students died at the hands of a murderer on Virginia Tech's campus. Matt Rogers was co-pastor of a Virginia Tech campus church for only a year before the shootings. To find answers of his own about the tragedy, Matt took a year-long journey. He learned that God is good, even when life isn't. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Matt Rogers. Matt, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. After this tragedy, you went on a year-long quest. What were you looking for? I was looking for a way to peace without answers because, you know, as I looked around at books that dealt with tragedy and grief and suffering, almost all of them nearly exclusively deal with answers. You know, how can God be good when the world isn't? Why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah, why does God let stuff like this happen? Why doesn't he just stop it? And that really wasn't what I was looking for. I kind of knew how to answer those questions in my, in my head already. What I was looking for was how do I experience what I believe? Mm -hmm. I know God is good, but how do I experience him as good when life isn't? So that was the journey that I went on. We were talking as that piece was, that little piece was airing a moment ago about the fact that it's a year ago tomorrow. Mm -hmm the one year anniversary, and yet in some ways it seems like it, it happened a month ago. Yeah. Time goes by so quickly. A year later, what are some of the feelings that students at Tech are still grappling with? Mm -hmm. Well, it really depends on the individual. Uh, you know, last year everybody was kind of in the same place. Everybody felt the same sadness, the same sense of heaviness and grief. This year, it really depends on who you talk to. Uh, some students feel like they've experienced a lot of healing in the past year. Other students you know, lost a, a best friend and they're not gonna be okay for a long time. So you've got people at two extremes and then you've got people who are at all points in between. Talk about Derek, you write about him in the book mm -hmm. and how this affected this man's, this young man's faith. Yeah, well, I realized that I had been kind of looking at what happened a bit from the outside. You know, I didn't know anyone personally who was killed. And so I, I if we're gonna discover how to experience God as good when, it, when life is at its worst, I knew I needed to, to interview somebody who had seen it at its worst. And so I talked to Derek and, you know, I approached him very cautiously, you know, would you be willing to talk to me about what you experienced? And, and he was, and, you know, to see, to hear him explain what he saw in those, in the classroom and still come out of that and say, you know, not only do I believe that God is good, but I've experienced him as good, even in the middle of something like this. Um, you know, the interview in the book, it's just, it's very encouraging. It was amazing. You interviewed a number of people that I felt had no fear, really seemed to be at peace with what had happened to them, certainly not denying, you know, right. how horrific it was. Were you surprised to find that? A little bit, yeah. I, I talked to a, a couple who lost six of their nine kids, and I interviewed them uh, in the book a, as well. And, you know, to talk to them, to have experienced a tragedy that most of us can't even imagine, and to still hear them, you know, you look into their eyes and there's grief there and there's mm -hmm. sadness, but there's also so much joy. And to talk to somebody who went through something like that and to hear them say time and again, God showed us that he was good right in the middle of that, uh, it's, it's so gratifying. Well, you have written a book called When Answers Aren't Enough. After interviewing all of these people and being right there at the, the Tech campus, what have you discovered? I mean, in your own faith walk, what have you discovered about God's goodness when there aren't any answers for things? Well, that it really is possible to experience it in the middle of bad things, you know, that it's not just something that you have in your head, it's something that you can actually experience. There's a great verse in, in Psalm 34 where the psalmist says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Don't just believe it, but taste it and see it. Those are sensory terms, not intellectual terms. And it's almost like the psalmist is saying, move beyond the intellect and actually experience your faith. And it is possible to do that even in terrible times. Actually, in some ways, terrible times give us an even deeper opportunity to do that, don't you think? Yeah, uh, one of the things I noticed after last April was that I felt things so much more acutely, so much mm -hmm. more intensely. I felt the brokenness of the world so much more than I think I did yeah. before, but I also felt the beauty of the world so much more. And it really is both at the same time. It's mm -hmm. very broken, but it's also very beautiful. And I think maintaining peace in a situation like that 
means recognizing both and experiencing God in the middle of that. You're a pastor. Yes. And so you had opportunity to speak to your congregation, to people in the congregation that you're a part of about all of this. How did this affect them? I mean, you talked about yourself being on the outside looking in. Well, for most of us, that was the case. Mm -hmm. But I think it had a, a deep impact on people watching as well as the people who were directly impacted by it. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of people asked, well, what kind of questions are the students mm -hmm. asking? And it's interesting, a lot of students weren't really asking questions, which is why I approached the book the way I did, not so much answering the how and the why, but, you know, how do we experience God as good in the middle of it rather than just intellectual questions. A lot of them were just really feeling grief and looking for a way to experience God yeah. during that. So, yeah. Well, as a, as a Christian, put aside the role of pastor, but as a Christian, how has all of this changed your faith, Wachman? The thing I think I've learned that I probably knew it before, but I don't know that I really fully believed it, was that there is no corner of creation that is free from the fall, that's free from what happened. And I think, you know, so many of us, we, we lived in Blacksburg feeling like we were so safe because it was such a small and, and safe community. But, you know, we learned that really there is no place you can go on earth that is free from, uh, from the curse and from the effects of it. Yeah, well, and having having faith built, one of the things that was said by a number of people in the book is, don't wait until the tragedy comes. Yes. Have your relationship with God solid, your knowledge of His faithfulness solid so that you have a place to go. Yeah, that's one of the things that I learned too is that if you have a history with God before something like this happens, it is much easier to experience God as good when it happens. Mm -hmm. Well, the book is, is really a fascinating book because Matt had an opportunity to interview so many people from Virginia Tech, but also people like the family that you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, that had gone through grief situations themselves. It's called When Answers Aren't Enough and it's available nationwide. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks Great to have you on the 700 Club.